Welcome back to World of Warcraft. We're playing Wrath of the Lich King as a Troll Shaman, currently level 32, and we're starting this episode in Hillsbred Foothills, next to the South Point Tower. After finishing the previous episode, I went to the Undercity, we completed two quests there, and picked up three more. One is the follow-up from the Unholy Alliance. We have to deal with the Ambassador, who is actually outside Razor Friend Downs. It's listed as a dungeon quest, but you don't have to enter the instance. I believe we can find him next time we are in 1000 Needles. We also have two quests for the Scarlet Monastery, the Hearts of Zeal, and into the Scarlet Monastery, even though we're not high enough to complete this quest. We're gonna have to be around level 40 before we can, well, maybe, maybe 38, before we can complete the Cathedral Wind and also the Armory Wing. Other than that, I did pick up the strong Troll's Blood Elixir, so we can uh, do the quest, the Elixir of Agony. We're gonna fight some Murlocs, and then some of the Naga, who are uh, on the eastern, uh, the eastern strand here. The Murlocs are directly south of us. My inventory is looking a lot better. I did uh, inventory management, listed a couple of items, also purchased quite a few. We have this new weapon. Can you believe I picked this up for two gold? So this is the Stone Hammer of the Monkey, significantly higher damage and DPS than the rod that we're using. We need to be level 33 though. So we're not able to use it yet. Picked up some of these agility elixirs. Can use one now. It's gonna give us 15 points. And I have some of the greater ones. Although we can't use them yet. Uh, what else did I find? We've got this minor glyph. Because we do have an extra glyph slot. However, this was a major mistake on my part. Because we got a major glyph slot. Not a minor one. We can't. We can't really apply the glyph until level 50. But it's alright. It wasn't that expensive. We have to go back to the auction house and find a major glyph. Uh, other than that... Yeah, we have two points in mental dexterity now. They, they gave us a decent amount of attack power. So I thought might as well. Apply water shield... Time to deal with the Murlocs. They're trying to run away. It's not gonna help them. Now that being said... It's best if we don't let them alert others. Running away is one thing. Calling for help is... Something completely different. Look at all these items. Shiny scales. But in all honesty, I think it's best if we pick everything up. We can now get water walking. So the fish oil comes from murlocs. Although I suspect it's probably not only murlocs. Hmm. 
might as well sell a couple of items. I listed pretty much all the gems, listed some of the shredder manual pages, all the ore that we had. Oh, this one is ranged. That's okay. We're just gonna cast lightning bolts. That was a decent critical strike. And yeah, I want the oil. I want the scales as well. Fury just makes the world a better place. That's gonna be our motto from now on. Didn't get a single reagent from that one. Not sure how I feel about that. Also see a pier on the island. No idea what kind of island it is though. Let's try water walking. There we go. No idea what type of enemies we're gonna find here. Condemned Acolyte. 7,000 points of health. Uh, never mind then. We don't want to be at the Purgation Isle. was definitely not expecting that. Should we continue to fight the Murlocs? I like the idea of getting a couple more uh, reagents, even though we do have a minor glyph to take care of it. The ability to walk on water is definitely a good one. I keep forgetting these are ranged. We need to slowly pull them back. 
There's a wind fury proc. Always bringing a smile to my face. The muck dwellers are gonna come to us. Formula. So for you to uh, want to increase your fishing skill by two, this is the uh, the enchant for you. Wait, two points. Why is it so low? Not even five points. It was a fire pin snapper. Now they're jumping around there. Really like the damage so far. So we have, uh, what, four scales, five vials of fish oil. Plenty of clams. We're gonna have a lot of meat to sell. There we go. Look at that damage. Wind Fury is amazing. Thought I managed to finish it off.
Somehow we did not pull the Mac Dweller. One more clam, uh, two clams, some scales. What is in the chest? Mostly junk. The mana potions are decent. Mana should get uh, ten of the scales, eight vials of oil. We're gonna kill a few more of these murlocs, then we can move on. I wonder if the naga, I think these are called the dagger spine, will drop, uh, will drop reagents as well. I remember the naga used to drop items that a shaman could use. Maybe I'm mistaken. We have enough, though. From the Murlocs alone. We really shouldn't go too close to South Shore. Experience was pretty good. The Tide Hunter. Oracles. So these are even higher level murlocs. What is going on in this area? There's a wind fury. Did a serious number on that murloc. We have 17... Place that here. 17 clams. Got a pearl, two pearls. Got a third uh, lustrous pearl. I don't like this. Another scale. Second formula. So this is South Shore. This is a pretty large human town. Poor humans. Having to live so close to the Murlocs is definitely not going to be pleasant. Yeah, these guards are high enough that we can't even tell what level they are.
wasn't even wind fury. That was a wind fury. Uh, let's get out of here. I'm not gonna pick up any more of these scales. So these are the shore hunters and the dagger spine sirens. He was trying to cast a spell. That was cute. Shadow Word Bane. So the Sirens can cast Shadow Spells and also Lightning Bolts. That doesn't make much sense. Tin Bane. Okay. Finally found a scale. We're gonna mine quickly and then go back to the sirens. The sirens and the the other dagger spine. Wind Fury. I'm starting to feel that Wind Fury is the answer to most of your problems as a shaman. This is an iridescent peril. So now we have two of these pearls. I wonder if anyone wants to pay money for an enchant like this. Plus two to your fishing skill. And it's going to occupy a glove slot. Although I guess most people will have a, a separate piece of gloves, probably a white one, just to place that enchant. No reason to occupy an enchantment slot on your precious high level gear.
And one more. There it is. Copper. I'll mine the copper. I'm not picky. When it comes to... The mining materials, everything sells for quite a few gold pieces. It's... It's a very pleasant surprise. Pretty much means that we're gonna mine everything that we can. We're sitting at 773 gold. We had over 800, but... Yeah, I spent about 30 pieces of gold uh, on the auction house. For the glyphs, the potions, well, elixirs, were pretty expensive as well. But I do want the agility. Also got some decent enchantments. You can now buy scrolls to apply the enchantments to your gear without having to trade through the non-tradable slot. On the boots, got plus five hit rating to replace the ring. We had uh, a pearl ring before we got the signet of uh, the signet of Argus. Seven points of agility on gloves, 50 points of health, and plus three stamina on our bracers. These were some cheap, well, somewhat cheap enchants you can get on the auction house at least when I browsed can definitely vary Real shame that we got zero pieces of cloth here. From either the Murlocs or uh, the Naga in the Strand. That was a Shadow Gem. We're getting the Shaman uh, reagents, so I'm not complaining. Maybe we have to fight the door. The. Wait. The Dwarves of Dungarok. Unfortunately, we don't have the quest. Should we go back to Taran Mill? We can hand the Elixir of Agony in. And I believe we, we saw another quest last time we were there. It was from uh, the Deathstalker Humbert. He did mention that a patrol of dwarves took his sword when he made camp. He probably wants it back. That is tin. Tin is worth significantly more than copper. Not sure when it was, but the last time I was near the auction house and checked the prices to list some of the tin ore. It was around three gold pieces for each one. So it is a lot. When it comes to certain items, you feel like you're in uh, in somewhat of a hyperinflation, inflationary economy. 
but it doesn't apply to everything. So it's a unique mix. You can get a lot of uh, low level weapons for her. relatively cheap. This hammer is going to sell to the vendor for uh, yeah, 1 gold and 15 silver. And I bought it, I think, for 2 gold and 31 silver. It's a good weapon for us, too. So someone bought the Grand Axe of Stamina. Can we remember when I listed that? So this is Humbert. What is it? Can get a decent breastplate, uh, but at the same time, the Robe of Evocation is better because of the critical strike, which will help us proc flurry more often, and the plus 50 health. So it's five points of strength. Yeah. Honestly, not worth it. Beware. Can do the quest, nonetheless. This is Tallow. Speak quickly. The hammer may fall. Weaklings, all of them. All of them. You, what are you looking at? Okay. What is this quest about? We have to slay Boulderfist Ogres and Enforcers. And then speak to Drumfell in Hammerfall. Before you go rushing off, you may want to test your skills. Wise words. Are we powerful enough to deal with the ogres? We probably are. What is it? This is the elixir of agony. Look at all these items. Dark lady, watch over you. Anything useful here? The Meditative Shaz and the High Apothecary Cloak. Pretty much junk. Beware the living. So this new elixir is finally ready to be tested. Why let a perfectly good, highly contagious play go to waste on a mere frog or dog? He's probably referring... Stanley the dog of uh, one of the farmers. So we need to head down to Dungarok, Dungarok. The barracks where those filthy little dwarves skitter about. Yeah, we know all about those. And we need a keg of uh, Sindiger Stout. I'm guessing this is some type of Victory for alcohol the dwarves enjoy. Christoph, the tradesman. Remember, patience. We should probably speak to Ott. That is the orc's myth. If we plan on repairing our gear, and definitely sell those and some of these stones. The formula I'm going to keep. I want to check the auction house. There's a cook. Thavon probably has a quest for the Yeti. Is this what I think it is? I am forsaken. Helcular's Revenge, it is. So Helcular was... Uh, Almost transformed into a lich. When a human lynch mob discovered his ritual, ritual lair in the hills and brutally killed him. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Was he a follower? To make matters worse, they buried his corpse in the South Shore Cemetery. Such disregard for the great wizard is unacceptable. As his apprentice, he's going to see it that uh, the rains of vengeance fall upon the town of South Shore. Tell me more. We're gonna need his rod first. 
So the Yeti overtook his ritual lair. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Darrow Hill was his uh, ritual lair? We learn something every day. Someone purchased some of the heavy leather we listed. Loktar. Didn't have the chance to skin any beasts for quite some time. Pretty close to 33. Strength. Can't wait to use the new hammer. Let's fight the Yeti. I'm not sure how common of a drop the red is. I'm hoping it's gonna be pretty common. Skin the Yeti, so there's that. Oh, someone's in there. Could even be an alliance. Alliance member. Haven't seen anyone running around. Oh, there's the rod. And here was. Thinking we're gonna have to spend uh, about half an hour here. Two iron deposits. We're going into that ritual there. Turned what? Yeti cave? these can skin that let's place the quest item here and I just realized I never mentioned the shard of water that was part of the Call of Water quest. Right, let me kill the Yeti. And I'm going to explain. So the Sword of Water and the Call of Water quest, uh, we are now on what I believe is the final part, where we have to go back to Islin in the Tidus Stairs, in the Barrens, Tidus Stair, to pick up the Water Totem. Uh, what happened when I went to Silverpine is I was looking, wait, that's not Silverpine, I was looking for the area west of the sepulchre, but it was not actually accessible from the sepulchre. I thought it was some type of hidden mountain passage. What you had to do is go north and follow the shoreline. It doesn't look like it, but you can actually ride all the way south and you will find the water stone. It's an area similar to the fire shrine. The 
the dormant, the shrine of the dormant flame, and also the earth shrine that was near the Valley of Trials, overlooking uh, Ratzet, I believe. Well, both. You could see both the valley and Ratzet on the other side. So drank the Sapta, a corrupted elemental appeared, level 22. Uh, I was initially considering recording it all, but I had no idea what I was doing and wanted to just get it out of the way. So far, I think the Call of Water is requiring too much running around. Having to go to an area in Silver Pine is fine. I still don't understand why the developers wanted you to go to Tarren Mill first, then go back to the Barrens, then go to Ashenvale, to the Sacred Ruins, then go back to to the, the area south of Ratchet, and then go to Silverpine. It's really tedious, and even now that we know what we have to do, there's no real way to optimally do that quest. You just have to yeah, basically go back and forth. That was level 33. And once again, we gain a single point of each one um, of the five stats. Let's place the final point here in mental dexterity. It's going to offer us how much? About 22 points of attack power. And as we get more intellect, that's going to scale, well, not scale better, but give us more attack power. The scaling is a single point of attack power per point of intellect. There's some decent synergy though, especially with ancestral knowledge, which for some reason is an enhancement talent. And not a restoration one. True silver. There's no way we can mine that one. There's a ferocious yeti. As if those were not bad enough. There is a chest. But I don't care that much about it. We came here for the rod. Got some uh, iron. Iron ore. So, yeah. Everything worked out in the end. So our two-handed may skill is uh, 69. That is uh, a bit unfortunate. In comparison, Staves is 160. Can equip it right now, but it's gonna take a while. It's not a fast weapon either. Uh, 70. Strap in. This will take a while. And the Yeti is probably not the best target. They deal a lot of damage. We should be fighting some of the lower level enemies. Let's 
apply wind fury. Although it will hardly make a difference. Stone Claw is definitely going to help, since we're going to be dealing almost zero damage. He's going to have an easier time getting... Getting aggro from us. Uh, it's unfortunately destroyed. Can cast it again. Starting to see some hits going through. It was a dodge. Sixteen points. Uh, that was a new record. No, I think we hit for twenty points of damage before. getting there. Wind Fury helps. I thought it was gonna be useless, but it isn't. Uh, those offer zero experience. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Orange Dagger came all the way here. This is a headland. Hoping to get some uh, Iron or Tin. Can also see members of the Syndicate. Could try fighting one of these. Finished off that fight with a nice crit. There's a Wind Fury proc. And I have to say, the glyphs introduced in uh, Wrath of the Lich King is a feature I 
I really like the idea of. And even practically. I mean, we're using a glyph like the Stone Claw Totem. I doubt it's going to be particularly popular one, especially during leveling. But you can customize your character in interesting ways with it. And I think a lot of classes um, have similar glyphs like that. The warrior had some decent stuff that uh, included revenge and also heroic strike. Thunderclap too. I definitely like the idea of a system like that. All they had to do is essentially remove some of the boring ones. For example, the Shaman had a Glyph of Lightning Bolt, increasing damage by 4%. Yeah, that doesn't really offer much. Even if it ends up being the highest one or the optimal one for DPS. It's... yeah. Is just another check mark. Ideally, you want some glyphs that maybe even change the way you uh, you approach fights. That's a lot more interesting. Okay, that was a big three hundred and eighty-four. Look at that. I'm beginning to like the weapon even more. Can you imagine if we had Corpse Maker or anything else around that level? The two-handed axe is the first weapon that comes to mind. Sort of an iconic weapon for both warriors, paladins. Enhancement shamans. Uh, yeah, enhancement shamans as well. We were not lucky. Only had the chance to enter Razor and Crawl once. You can check the mailbox. We sold a bunch of stuff. Mm, Mossa Gate. Over 20 gold pieces each. Yeah, different people buying everything. Medium leather, shadow gem. Can open everything. Close to 900 gold. The quest we can complete is Helcular's better be Revenge. Remember, patience. Now, the next Listen. one is going to have us charge the rod with the powers of the flame of Azel, Veras, and Uzel, and then drive the rod into Helcular's grave in South Shore. However, that is a quest I'm not gonna bother with. And I'm going to tell you why. While I was leveling the Undead Warrior in Classic Hardcore, I attempted to do this quest, not knowing what exactly would happen near his uh, grave, which was in the outskirts of uh, South Shore. Unfortunately, there were a lot of human guards, and they were around level 45. It was probably the only time when uh, I was really close to dying. Uh, that was, of course, due to some weird changes in uh, in hardcore servers. You couldn't really target the guards unless you were flagged for PvP, so all Speak you could do friend. is run away. You couldn't, for example, use hamstring. I barely made it by using a target dummy. But it was still a close call. Had to use a potion, everything. 
Can't really say if anything changed in Wrath of the Lich King, but probably not worth it. Dying here is not a big deal, but it's gonna slow you down nonetheless. That priest was trying to what, enter the inn with a mount. She was too tall. Couldn't fit through the door. We have two more quests here. And what else do we have in Hillsbrad? The Hammer May Fall is going to send us to the Arathi Highlands. These two we can't complete. What about the ones in Thousand Needles, though? We have to go there as soon as possible. So I think I know what we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to complete the two quests in Hillsbrad. Deal with the ogres on the way to Hammerfall. Unlock the flight path. And once we complete that quest, we're going to use our Hearthstone, go to Orgrimmar, and then just complete everything that we have in Thousand Needles. I'm looking at the Eastern Kingdoms. Here, 1,000 Needles. I have the feeling that some of these quests will end up turning gray, and I don't want that. Then again, even if they do, it's not the end of the world. But I do like 1,000 Needles. I feel... It's one of the better zones. And we are 33 now. Might be 34, close to 35 by the time we finish 1,000 Needles. And then we can go... Then we can go to the Shimmering Flats. And we're gonna be high level for Dustwell on Mars. Definitely like the sound of that. Can add a dungeon run or two in between. Sounds pretty good. Sound I yeah. We could forget about 1000 needles and quest around here. Definitely an option. Or maybe Arathi too. I'm gonna have to think about this one. The problem with staying on this continent is that there is no shaman trainer. If we're questing in Kalimdor, both Thunderbluff and Orgrimmar are essentially pretty close to all these zones. It's a very short flight. Undercity is somewhat different. So overall, I think we're best heading to heading back to Kalimdor. And we do have the Call of Water quest. Yeah. That sounds the best way to approach this. Uh, do we need to repair sweet nectar? Don't really care. These we can basically sell. And the rod we can keep in case we have to heal. Yeah, we're looking good. I think we're gonna be fine. We're still a bit short on... wool cloth. We could probably get some in Thousand Needles. Maybe from the Harpies. Are there any other humanoids? The Grim Totem. The Grim Totem and the Harpies. Yeah, the scale is uh, tipping towards going back to Kalimdur. That being said, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. Hope you are enjoying the Wrath of the Lich King Shaman playthrough. 
and I'll see you in the next part. Wherever that is.